Now, internal responsibilities were all connected within an organization, within an institution, within an organization, whatever responsibility I have as an engineer, that is what I call internal responsibility. Now, there are very important external responsibilities. And you know, external responsibilities are very, very important because as an engineer, whatever I do is benefited by the community around me. If a civil engineer is in charge of a construction of a bridge, construction of roads, airports, buildings, if I'm not aware of my responsibilities, the society, the people around me who use it are going to be very badly affected. Around us, we have many, many examples of occupational crimes which have ruined the, the people, the community around us, the society around us. Okay. One very, very important point that we'll discuss at this juncture is, see, what are the different types of crimes that you see around us? Domestic crime, you know, it is directly connected to the members of a family. Professional crime is connected to my profession. A blue collar crime is a crime that I, the wrong that I do, say as an executive or as a CEO of a company. If I am the CEO of a company, when I do something which is very wrong, it is called a blue collar crime. And there are crimes against a person, against a property. For example, when I do a theft, when I assault a person, if there is a fight going on, if a rape victim is before me, all these are called crimes against a single person. Now, there are victimless crimes. If a person is a drug addict, actually, there is no other victim. The person who takes in the drug is directly affected. So such drug addiction comes under victimless crime, that if I am a drug addict, I myself am affected because of this crime. Then, luckily for Kerala, one very proud thing I feel about this state called Kerala is, we do not have issues connected to religion. What are occupational crimes? See, when I'm working as an engineer, if I do any violation of law, it is, it is very easy to talk about uh, civil engineers because it is very easy to understand. If I'm making a bridge, if I'm not using the proper amount of uh, iron, steel, uh, brick, everything that is required, concrete. So in a construction, if I am violating laws connected to my work activities, it is going to be a very big occupational crime. As an electronics engineer, as an electrical engineer, if I am designing an object, the main thing in my mind, in my thought process should be what? I should be designing something which is very useful and very safe to the community around me. Whenever I design something, I should be aware of what I'm making and who is going to use that product. Excuse me. So most of the occupational crimes are special instances of conflicts of interest. See, when does a, a civil engineer do a crime which creates a very big issue in a construction? It is when I have a personal greed or I have corporate ambitions or if I have people above me who are misguiding me to do wrong things. Okay, so occupational crimes are very, very important, which we should be very seriously telling our students because the future engineers, they should never be doing this because if they do an occupational crime, directly it will be affecting 
the society around me. So one is price fixing, endangering lives, and industrial espionage. See, what is price fixing? We, we might have heard about the 1983 Washington power bid. See, there are cases where competitors come together and they jointly set up a price. This is called pricing cartels. Actually, what is happening, you know, we are fooling the people around us who are using that product. So this is called price fixing. Laws have come up all around the world, which forbids companies from coming together, from jointly fixing prices. When an object is, when a product comes out into the society, we should realize that it should be reasonably priced so that the common man will be able to use it positively. So one big occupational crime is price fixing, which as an engineer, we or the future engineers whom we are teaching today should never do. Now, what is endangering lives? And that is a very clear thing that I have been talking about. If a civil engineer does a construction, the building, the roads, the airport, the bridge, everything is going to be used by the people around me. If I am an electronics engineer, I design a product, I should know that I should be aware of the safety issues connected to that product. So, endangering lives by my work as an engineer is a big occupational crime. As a professor, as a teacher, I should be telling each student of mine to avoid any design, anything as an engineer, which is going to be harmful to the health of the people, the human beings, the plants, the animals, the environment around now, what is industrial espionage? Basically, it is fine. See, if I am a leading industry in this area, I can always send a person to secretly gather information from the other from the teacher company around me. And this is a very wrong thing to do. Industrial espionage is an occupational Right. The vital information secretly gathered from my competitor for economic gains is called industrial espionage. And this is a very bad occupational crime. And if caught, the punishment is horrible.